friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a hypermature morganian cataract let us see how we can manage this case this is the main incision with a 2.8 mm steel keratome on the posterior aspect of the limbus and now a side port a side port is being made on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. The main incision is at 11 and this is at around 2 o'clock. An air bubble is injected to fill off the anterior chamber. And now, Tripan Blue 0.06% dye is applied over the anterior capsule of this hypermature cataract underneath this air bubble. And now I am going to inject two agents. This is adrenaline and this is a combination of gylocaine, tropicamide and phenylephrine. It is known as phenocaine in India. The dye is washed out and now what I am expecting is weak genule in this case and I want to judge during capsular access if I need to use a CTR. Visco is injected this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose now I take a cystitone, a 26 G bent needle and make a puncture at the center of the anterior capsule and we can see that milky fluid comes out. We can aspirate the milky fluid without making a minirexis in hypermature morganian cataracts. Let me repeat this. In intumescent cataracts, we cannot. In intumescent cataracts, we have to do a minirexis first and then aspirate some cortical matter. In hypermature morganian cataract, just after the puncture, we can aspirate the milky fluid without doing minirexis. It is done. We have aspirated some milky fluid. Now I inject visco, 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. This is the viscoelastic substance. And now I am going to use a utrita forceps. I have already there is a tag. I am going to hold this tag. And now I'll check if I can if I can do a rexus. At this time I'm making a judgment judgment about the strength of the journal, whether I need to use a seat here or not. I'm doing the rexus very gently and I find that I need not use a capsular tension ring in this case. So the rexis is done. The size of this rexis is about 4.75 millimeter. Now I inject visco and introduce the FACO probe. Bottle height is 70 centimeter, ultrasonic power 70 percent, flow rate 30 and vacuum 300. The FACO needle goes in and now what to do? Should I do direct chaff? See this free floating nucleus is very tricky to manage. What I am planning is to start eating off this pie this idli-like substance. In South India, 
idli is a very nice breakfast and this hypermature mograngian cataracts is like a floating idli you just start eating off the pie from one side don't bother about dividing the nucleus just tilt the nucleus and start eating it up since i have used low vacuum and low flow rate i am not much afraid of catching the pusti capsule in this case bottle height is also low so that lot of fluid doesn't enter into the eye at on time and it doesn't cause genular dialysis so uh, i'm just emulsifying the floating nucleus bit by bit by bit this is a hard nucleus that's why the ultrasonic energy has been increased to about 70% this is real time surgery and you can see how slowly i'm going about in the nucleus my plan is to emulsify most of the nucleus but not the last small bit of the nucleus because my past experience is as i try to emulsify the last piece i tend to catch the pusti capsule and make a pusti capsule rent in such cases so my plan is to emulsify the nucleus and leave a small piece of the nucleus implant the lens and then after implanting the lens emulsify the last small remaining bit of nucleus so that's it i stop here come out inject visco 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose push the fragment down towards 5 o'clock and fill off the capsular bag with visco and now i'm going to implant the lens first i enlarge the main wound first because i'm going to use a white bore b cartridge whenever we use b cartridges we should extend the main wound by about 0.2 mm here goes the lens this is a single piece monofocal hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens and the lens has gone into the capsular bag inject some more visco so that the corneal endothelium is nicely protected after injecting a bit of visco after injecting a bit of visco now i introduce the fico probe again into the anterior chamber and emulsify this last small piece of nucleus over the intraocular lens and this is a sure shot way of protecting the posterior capsule the intraocular lens will protect the posterior capsule so whenever you do a hypermature morganian cataract if you want to protect the posterior capsule 100% time keep a small bit of nucleus implant the intraocular lens first inject some visco push the intraocular lens behind and then emulsify the small piece bringing it at the center of the anterior chamber 
so we have done it now as I clean the visco let me tell about the patient the patient is a very unfortunate man the patient has lost his right eye owing to corneal ulcer there is a large corneal obesity and the patient cannot see anything with this uh, with the right eye and this is the only eye the patient had the left eye so a one eyed patient and i dared to do this surgery so when it comes when you become uh, quite confident of your capabilities you take up some such cases be a great surgeon and take this kind of cases and the another side is these patients in countries like india bangladesh nepal bhutan malaysia in these areas these patients cannot pay they can pay only a small bit probably just the cost of the surgery so just to help these patients out we do this kind of surgeries now let us come back to the surgery this is cleaning the capsula bag i'm irrigating the capsula bag and aspirating all the cortex the lens is nicely placed in the capsula bag the size of the rex is always about 4.75 mm why because if i try to make a large rex in such cases we may go into the area of anterior genular insertions and then it will be a big problem so in such cases i always try to do a rex of just about 5 mm or little less than 5 mm hydro has been done to close the side port now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber all the visco that was sticking to the corneal endothelium is removed at this time using the aspirating port for irrigation and now this is the last step of the surgery i'm hydrating the wound with moxifloxacin as a hydrate this wound some amount of moxi goes into the anterior chamber and now i check the intraocular pressure find it okay and conclude the case thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills it will inspire you to take up difficult cases like this and it will give you some tips and tricks to manage such cases.